everybody. Welcome to Powerful Impact. This is SP, and we have Nev, the man behind the blue wall, and our special guest today is Mickey Fax. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing today, SP? Good, good. I've, I've been wanting to have a financial discussion because I don't know if the rest of the world is as confused as I am. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine let's, let's talk about it yeah i've i've been trying to figure out this um bitcoin thing going on and i've watched some of your lives i've watched you kind of talk about it but i still have just a wide knowledge of it I, there's nothing specific that i have you know, as far as knowledge. So can you explain as if, um, I always say I need a Bitcoins for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's try to break it down like this, right? The American dollar was not the very first form of currency. Mm -hmm. Okay, before that, you know, there was probably gold and silver and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then before that, before people found gold, people were trading. Like, yo, I'll trade you my ox and you can trade me for your uh, horse. Or like the something. barter system? The barter system, right. Mm -hmm. So all Bitcoin is, is another form of currency for us to trade right mm -hmm. now bitcoin is not governed by the government mm -hmm. trading is governed when people trade it like if me and you trade right now it's between you and me nobody ain't gotta know <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's the same way bitcoin operates okay okay so it operates in that now you can go and buy things with bitcoin but the value of bitcoin goes up sometimes and sometimes it goes down so if you purchase right now bitcoin is probably at forty three thousand dollars that's the that's the that's the the wealth of one bitcoin wow right so if you sell the bitcoin for forty three thousand dollars in 10 years you might have sold away you know Two hundred thousand dollars. The the value of the coin goes up as more people get involved in it and learn about it. So mm -hmm. you can trade it like the stock market, or you can use it to buy certain things. It's just another form of currency. I hope that helped us. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when they start talking, because what throws me off is they go into these into these different pockets. So from Bitcoin to Ethereum to, you know, what what is the difference and how, how, what is the difference between them and how do they connect to each other? Okay, so you and I can make a Bitcoin right now. It's, it's mined, right? So there mm -hmm. could be a SP Bitcoin, but it might not have any value. The same way I can have a Mickey Fax Bitcoin and it might not have any value. Ethereum was one of the first Bitcoins that was established along with Bitcoin. It was one of the first okay. coins, coins established, pardon me. And Ethereum, right, is currently probably sitting at like three, four thousand dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just another form of currency within the coin, the, the fungible token, right? It's just another token that you can, you know, proceed with in the exchange of currency. So when they talk Bitcoin, they always talk about um, the effects that Bitcoin is um, having on the environment. How exactly do you mine Bitcoin? Now that I don't know. That's a question I can't answer. I'm strictly, I don't even really care about the environment when it comes to Bitcoin. I just know, the, I just know what it is in terms of finance. And how you can make money off of it once once we start because I don't know how I don't know how the dollar is made, mm -hmm. right? Like they say, you know, they say it's a paper, but I don't I don't know what kind of paper. It feels different from cardboard. It feels different from loose leaf. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but I don't know how that's made. So I don't know how, same way I don't know how the, how the dollar's made, I don't know how Bitcoin is made. I just know how people use it. Everything good? Yeah, just making okay. making sure you can hear me because I see everybody uh, twirling on my screen. Oh, no. <laughs> when, so, okay, so you have the Bitcoin. They have the NFTs. And how do you go from the Bitcoin to the NFT? And how does um, that translate for artists? Okay, so an NFT is a non-fungible token. That's the definition of an NFT. Mm -hmm. Okay, an NFT is basically a formatted document that has value attached to it that mm -hmm. can be sold within the market of people that deal in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I can create a, an image or a GIF of a dog pissing on a, a fire hydrant and sell a whole bunch of Bitcoin. I mean, excuse me, of NFTs on this because of who I am and what this NFT represents within the specific company that creates the NFT. If me and you created an NFT right now and we have the mm -hmm. last Nipsey Hustle verse, we might not be able to sell this NFT because we are not in the network of the NFT community. You mm -hmm. have to be within the network in order to sell an NFT. A lot of people okay. are losing money within this because they think they can just create an NFT and become rich. You no. need a following. You need a following within the community yourself. of the NFTs. Okay. So the community, How, are there a lot of different communities or is one big community? How, how does that part work? And how do you become a member of the community? The community is like, I don't want to say people in the dark web and I don't want to, but, but I, I won't. It's just, a secret society. All we ask is trust. Yes. It's, it's, it's okay. So the way the NFTs worked in the beginning mm -hmm. was a bunch of rich people who had mm -hmm. invested in Bitcoin early on, who were paying mm -hmm. an obscene amount of money in Bitcoin for NFTs. And oh, that's okay. how NFTs got popular. Mm -hmm. And now when you see people like Tory Lanez, who created an NFT, he has a big following and said, hey, you can buy this NFT for a dollar. He sold a million of them for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And people thought that they were going to be making money on this NFT. And currently it's not moving. Oh. Now, so he, the NFT he made will, money. Yeah, he made money. But the people who bought the NFT probably did not make any money. Now. The NFT will probably make money, sadly, when something tragically happens to Tory Lanez. Oh, okay. It will drive up the value. Or if some mm -hmm. if if something happens where he retires and he doesn't make music anymore, then that becomes an artifact. But until that happens, it's just a document. It's just a file. So when you have someone like Nas, who actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, sold um singles off of his album but well not just the singles but he sold the um how do y'all make money off records what is it called royalties 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 yeah, yeah. he sold the portion of the royalties with the nft right what do you, do you what think the... that people would collect do you think that people will collect on that down the line or is it the same story like you have to pass away yada yada I mean, what is what is the what, to you, Nat Nev and SP? What is the value of a brand new Nas song with an NFT currently? I'll be honest. I was gonna buy the five hundred dollar one. I couldn't get it, so it was worth five hundred to me. It was worth five hundred dollars to you. I was gonna purchase it, and um, I don't know. People told me that bots and these things are the ones purchasing these things actually and reselling them, like you said, on the black web or dark web or whatever. Because it was weird. I couldn't. I know. I know. Actually, one or two people actually did get one, but I was unable to get one. That that was I, a second attempt. 
I think the conversation needs to be with the people that have it. Now, if it's an NFT of the original session of, you know, halftime. Oh, forget about it. Yeah, that's a whole different. Yeah. To me. That's like unlocking. You're talking about like unique. Uh, what's the word? Content. Right. Like unique. Content. Right. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. This th that's that's what I was asking. What is the value of this new Nas song for you in this particular field? And if you're saying 500, you by you answering 500, you answered your own question. You're not even saying that it's going to ri rise in value. I think that's a conversation that you need to have with the people who have purchased the NFT. Has the NFT risen in value? Definitely not much since no, not since they purchased it. But I think it's a these these are like long term, long term uh, investments, five year, ten year. I think that's what the hope okay. is. You know, so right. So just to be clear, Nev, when the NF, the reason why hip hop is into NFTs now is not because of long term holds. The reason why people are into Next. NFTs is because Kings of Leon, and and and. Uh, the rock some elect yes, and mm -hmm. the, the electronic DJs were making ninety-two million dollars, obscene amounts of money, off of the NFTs. That's why hip hop got into it. Hip hop doesn't care about long term. Quick hip -hop, flip. They wanted the quick flip, but they did not realize that there is a secret society within this community. And now you got all these you got all these artists talking about NFTs, NFT, making NFT, making NFT, making NFT, and they don't know what they're doing. Not they saying that they're devaluing. Undervalued too. They've been highly not, when they sold, they did not sell for what they thought. Eminem, right. Premier, everybody's they feel. But man, I won't get too controversial. But people also feel that it's because of it's people of color, the, the negative connotation with hip hop. What well, you're saying too, we didn't do the background research, we didn't, we didn't do the due diligence. We didn't do the background checks on it. I did the background. I spoke to the people of color that do it. And you got to be in that community. And these people invested in Bitcoin early on. So they have disposable Bitcoin income. And it's tons of them that are that shade of color that are able to say, I will put $10 million down for this electronic DJ and his art and his music to own it. Which is, goes back to what I said to SP. Me and SP could have the last Nipsey Hustle verse and not sell one NFT. So some, this has always been my question. So I, I purchased an NFT. Um, it's just a certificate that I own it. There's nothing um, physically that you own in your hand. And if nothing they decide physically. to do something with the physical in the real world with that NFT, then what happens to your certificate? Well, you don't get a certificate. You just get the file. Oh. It's a file. That's all the NFT is, is a file. It's some of, tangible. Some of them give away, like, a vinyl will come with it, some type of merchandise, sometime. Like, I think Nas is the $10,000 one came with vinyl for some oh. odd reason. Like, it was like a, a, a limited press. I think you get things like that with it. Uh, I mean, I mean, hey. But that's not like the real quote unquote. That's not the NFT. NF, that's not the yeah, NFT. Exactly. The NFT isn't the, 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 the vinyl. It's just a bonus. You paying ten grand for a vinyl signed? Yeah, signed. I guess. A sign. Yeah. Oh wait, okay. You paying ten thousand dollars for? A, 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 I'm not gonna count nobody's pockets, and I'm not gonna say what yeah. something is worth and what something is not worth. Uh -uh. But I would spend ten thousand dollars on ten specifically gold plated, Illmatic, or it was written pieces. I'm not paying ten thousand dollars for a brand new Nas record. Got it. I mean, okay. would you? Would you guys? I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know. No, nah, I don't have nah. it like that. No, no. If I had it like I that, maybe, I can't man. think of much besides transportation or a house that I put ten thousand dollars into. That uh, 
or a business or something that I can actually hold in my hand. <laughs> right. Um. So my next question, outside of the Bitcoin world, if somebody had, say they, after they pay all their bills for the month, they have this extra hundred dollars in their hands. What advice would you give them financially for that hundred dollars? If they had an extra hundred dollars, all of their bills were paid, all of their food was taken care of, and it's just yes. leisure, it's just money that they want to invest. Yes. Um, first thing I would do, I would tell them to just for purpose, just for, just for, for, for financial purposes, just so they could see how money can grow. I would tell them to open up an American express high yield savings account. And I will put $25 into that account, put $25 into that account and you don't touch that money. Then. I would tell them to open up a Ameritrade business account to trade uh, to trade on the stock market, a TD Ameritrade account, and take twenty five dollars and put that twenty five dollars into that account. Then I would tell them to open up. Let me look at some. Let me look at what I got. I'm sorry. I would tell them to. Oh, I would tell them going to, into the secret files. <laughs> yeah, I would tell them to open up an E Trade account, put twenty five dollars into that E Trade account, and then I would tell them to open up a Coinbase account and put twenty five dollars into that Coinbase account. Now you got four different accounts. Let's talk about these four different accounts very quickly. The first account is the American Express High Yield Interest Account. The reason why I would put twenty five dollars into that account. They tell you never to put money into a savings account because there is no interest. A high yield savings account will give you 0 0.50 interest on the, on that $25 every month. Now, it might not seem like a lot, but as you continuously put money into it, it will continuously grow money on its own because you're allowing that money to sit. Right. So that's that. Right. The $25 that will go into your TD Ameritrade account. I would have that as a short term investment account. So it's only money that you want to flip very quickly, right? Uh -huh. You can either have penny stocks or very short term dollar amount stocks, right? So, like AMC at one point was $2. When it shot up to about what, $50, $60, I had money in it when it was Boom. $175. Because uh -huh. I knew that the, at some point the pandemic was going to be over and the, uh, the movie theaters would eventually open up because there was so much money. People were still shooting movies. Uh -huh. So I would put the $25 into a stock that you feel can flip the $25 quicker than another stock that you have. So the Ameritrade account would be a short term hold for your stocks that you could flip quicker. So is that a quick flip? Yes, kind of? but that's if you want short term, quick money. And when I say short term, I mean between one day and six months. You see how Nev said, you know, people are going to hold on to the NFT for, you know, years down the line. Five to 10 years. Yeah. Long play. The five to 10 years should be another money market account, which is your E-Trade account which I said previously. Now you have the $25 that's just sitting in there. You put that into stock like Apple and Microsoft and the big blue chip stocks, right? That you know will grow constantly over time because they're bigger corporations and you just continuously put money in there and you invest money in there every so often and you'll see your money grow over the course of five to 10 years. Now, last but not least is the Coinbase. Coinbase is Bitcoin and coin based tokens where you put $25 in and you pick whatever one you want. So I have money in Bitcoin. I have money in Ethereum. I have money all over the place. 
I currently have 12 different money market accounts that I check every day. I have a I have a Coinbase account, I have an Ameritrade account, I have an E-Trade account, I have a high yield savings account, and then I have eight different bank accounts that just house money for my different businesses. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. So when you are looking at the stock market and or stocks in, in, in general, how do you read? And know and know what's going on with each one, because I look at all of those numbers and them arrows, and uh, I have no earthly idea what any of that means. <laughs> that is a that's an episode within itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell somebody how to read the stocks if they've never kind of looked at it. Like I would have to have a whole graph up to show you exactly how the numbers work, but essentially. When it's green, you just look for the green. If it's green, you're good. If it's red, the market is down. Okay. Bull and bear. Bull and well, no, bull. <laughs> bull and bear is not green and red, right? Bull is when you're being bullish in your in your attraction to purchase, or bear was is the is the opposite, right? That's what that means. Okay, good. No, thanks for the clarification. We we need that. We need that, Vicky. Absolutely. No, I I because I didn't want people to, you know what I'm saying? So what's what would you con what would you consider a must a must purchase for someone who's trying to build um generational wealth? What is what is the first goal that they should look towards? Um, they should look, I mean, it's hard to tell people what stock to look into because everybody has different goals and different plans. And my research may not fit your research in terms of, you know what I mean? What's, what's to, what to invest. Mm -hmm. So I would say investing is not an overnight thing. The same way we can the same way we can tell each other if I was to say uh I say Jerome's in the house. I say Jerome's in the house. I'm pretty sure y'all can both finish this the the, the quote. Cuz you did your research. You did your studying. You know it. That's the same thing with the market. You have to constantly watch the market, watch the fluctuations, watch it, watch it go up, watch it go down, and 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 be able to figure out what works for you. Now, blue chip stocks are probably the best to just kind of get a gauge on what mm -hmm. to use, um, and and how the stock market moves. So, like Apple, mm -hmm. Nike, and you know, all of the popular things that we buy, we can just watch them and see how it goes up and goes down and goes up and goes down. Mickey, I'm sorry, but I have to ask, what is a blue chip stock? A blue chip stock is a Fortune 500 company stock that constantly will always make money. So Amazon is a blue chip stock. McDonald's is a blue chip stock. Apple is a blue chip stock. Walmart. These are stocks that are high in value. And they're not gonna go down anytime soon. No, and unless even, something. Even with unless, the crazy calamity that's going on now with inflation right. and gas prices. Even with the even how things are catastrophic, it will. You know, everything that goes up must come down, but it also always go goes back up. You know what I mean? So somebody like me, um, I, I'm switching jobs, and I have a retirement that I was invested. So I can't continue to put money into it. So the money that's there, what would be the best way to um, move that money without uh, the tax liability? Move to Florida. 
<laughs> well, I live in Texas. It's just as good. <laughs> oh, they're going to tax you in Texas. There's only two places that they don't tax people for their money. And that's Florida and that's Wyoming. And that's the reason why Kanye went to Wyoming. Mm. It's not because he wanted to be around the 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 the, the bull. The sheep. And the sheep. <laughs> You know, black people, we made fun of them. Why he in Wyoming? Why? You know, it was an economic move. Wow. And land, mm. land was, I guess, reasonable as well. Land was dirt cheap, and there was Literally. no taxes. And there was when, no when. taxes. So that's why people. That's why the Italians moved. The the Italians and the Jewish people moved to Florida. They moved to Florida. They don't move to Florida because of the sun and it's beautiful and it's nice. They moved to Florida because of taxes. When you finally take your money out of your four hundred one k. And things like that, your retirement plan, they cannot tax it in Florida. Mm -hmm. That's why people do it. So that's the only way to avoid taxation. Okay, so now I have the money. Um, and now I have a significantly larger chunk of change. Is it safe to just break it up as you as you've talked here, um, but just in bigger amounts, or is it wise to move it into another space? I mean, depending on how much it is and and how much you know your taxation laws in Texas are, how much they're going to get you for. Like, if you have, let's just say you you know uh, you don't need to tell me the number, but let's just say you have a hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And let's just say, you know, the taxation laws in, 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 in Texas is 26%. They're going to take $26,000. So you left with $74,000. Okay. Now, what do you do with $74,000 is the question. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on, it depends on what, your, what, what your goals are, right? What, are you looking for short-term goals to, to, to get your money? Are you trying to flip your money quickly? Or are you trying to, you know, have long-term investments and have something, yeah. Okay. Uh, or is it short-term investment or is it a long-term investment? Mm -hmm. And where are you going to place, where are you going to place your money, right? Is it life insurance? Is it into the stock market? Are you going to put it on a big chip, you know, just for some clarification, Sirius XM satellite, right? Mm -hmm. They started in 2004. Their stock was at like 11 cents. My father put, my father, he put about 30,000 into it. That stock is currently at like 175 or something like that. He probably made over a million dollars on that stock because he was in on it early and he saw where the climate was going. But it took time for that stock to get or well over a million dollars. Now you can, if you're trying to get quicker, quicker money, there's a thing called day trading, right? Where you can tr you can day trade and make thousands of dollars quickly. But I would suggest researching day trading, getting a mentor who's trustworthy on day trading, and and watch what they do to accumulate money and excess money, and only spend money that you are willing to lose. Got it. it always says that. Everybody always says that. Only invest in stuff that you're willing to lose, no matter what. I know you got to go fast. Can I just? Can you promote your thing? Uh, tell us about your. Um, I know it's not a master class. Tell us about your school, and rhyming and emceeing and etc. Like, give us give us the breakdown of that, please. Yes, yes. I founded a school called Pendulum Inc. It is a school for lyricism. We teach. Uh, advanced techniques and rap theory, which is intermediate level emceeing as well as advanced level emceeing. Um, we also have uh, a mental health specialist is going by the name of Jeff Walker from Rhyme College, who teaches every Wednesday on the mental health aspect of rhymes that are written. We also have a legendary MC that comes through once a week, excuse me, once a month at the end of the month to teach their particular technique. Uh, this this month, we have Inspector Deck pulling up this Wednesday, actually. Next month, we have Fonte. And then the following month, we have Master Ace and Graph. 
We also have three elective classes. One class is a Mickey Money class, which we teach about monetizing your brand. We have a content creation class that's led by uh, Comic Book Cam. And we also have a battle rap class that's led by Chilla Jones. Our graduation will be happening in Atlanta, Georgia, February 25th and 26th with Bun B as the commencement speaker. Shout out to SP. You know, we had to bring a Texas boy through. So he will be the commencement speaker handing out the students their diplomas and degrees uh, from that standpoint. And yes, it's a fully functioning school. Uh, we have 55 students currently. It's all operated on Zoom. I'm trying to cap it out at 60 students. So I'm just looking for five more students and then I'm stopping enrollment until next year, which we will expand it to 120 students. Um, and you know, hopefully you'll see us in different curriculums across the country. Can you tell them like the links, the pricing, however to get, you know, to get this happening? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the course is eight months. Um, and you're only committed to come to six classes out of the 10 that we provide every every month. 80% uh, completion of the class allows for uh, availability to come to the graduation. The pricing currently right now for the entire semester is $1,600 or $900 a semester, which is $900 two times, or you can pay $300 a month, or you can pay $22 a class. Will it be any like grants or what do you call that? Scholarships for certain people like in the city or whatever? Yeah, so we're currently working on grants for this year. Uh, we're still fleshing out our curriculum so we can apply for a grant to give some students the opportunity to uh, have, you know, a scholarship placement. And yes, we are working diligently on getting scholarships. We actually have one student who is a part of our scholarship program currently right now, but we will as we move into semester two, we will be having FAFSA involved as well as scholarship programs involved for students who are interested in signing up to our class in school. So before you go, I know um, I just wanted to say thank you. I've been um, watching you for a long time. Um, I've always admired your style. I've always admired how much you how you move through this world and I really admire your your the way you can turn a phrase is like no other so uh, I have I have been as a 50 year old hip hop head you have been one of my favorites for a long time and I really thank you for coming on and sharing your knowledge absolutely um you know and you know we can reschedule another one Nev um, you know, I understand that uh, I have to go, uh, but, you know, I, I do enjoy this conversation and I do see that there's more questions that could have been answered today. Uh, but, you know, we don't have a babysitter and I didn't want to charge. Uh, so, you know, I, I had to kind of limit this to a, a 30 minute uh, call this time. But, you know, we can definitely uh, have a part two to uh, answer some of the other questions that you guys may have in, when dealing with uh, finance on a macro or micro level. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. I thank everybody for watching. This was just a quick minute with Mickey Pax, but we definitely appreciate all the time that he's actually given us because I know he had other things to do. So I appreciate you very much. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I hope and pray that we will get back together. I will be able to share more information with you and your followers and your viewers because I'm all about giving back to our people. Our people are very, very much so disenfranchised when it comes mm -hmm. to finance. In any way that I can help with the knowledge that I've learned, uh, I will give back, whether in interview form or rap form. You know, Mickey Fax will be here to provide that, you know, to the people because that's that's what I'm here for. You know what I mean? He's but, gone out know. and made a powerful impact. We've made a powerful impact. You go out there and make a powerful impact. And y'all better listen to his Black History Month Rhyme, shoot, he dropped the Encyclopedia Britannica on y'all, all right? Africanica. That <laughs> joke is no joke. Already. Check that out. For real. Already. And if you, haven't, if you haven't checked out his, his album uh, with, with uh, Blue. Forget Woo. it. Narrative. Forget <laughs> it. Not. Forget yeah. about it. We are, we yeah. are fans Woo. over here. But today Thank we're going to be financial literacy, and that's what we want to focus on. But we had to give MC... 
is his due, man. Enough respect, Mickey Facts. That's Dr. Facts. Thank you so much.